I'm going to start a bit of a walk of the freshwater line. This is uh, Bay of Haunt Lane to um, what's going to be sort of Swainston, just outside Swainston Bridge. We're here on the bridge, which there isn't much left. Sit down there. It's been quite ploughed. over here and just over there you see a very small divot that must have been cutting over there which obviously is the so we're going to go for a walk down on the island side and get back to uh, the main line the line goes back down there and comes back across over the bridge just further down so that, that farm on the horizon over there line from there so catch you later so just found an old isolator on the ground there look. along with another one over there <laughs> bit of an old telegraph pole here somewhere on the line it's a bit boggy down here people been chucking stuff off the bridge like they do so this is looking towards Swainston, watching well. So it's been uh, strengthened fairly modern times by the looks of it. Someone's shooting by the sounds of it. An old office chair dumped down there. So that's the course of the line just up there. We're looking back towards Newport now. Nice preserved uh, fence, Southern Railway fence tensioner. It's in quite good nick that. That's the route from down towards Maine, down towards Newport, sets the line following this head of trees down there. So the railway line sort of comes down over this line of fences. And there used to be a really big concrete bridge here, which is now completely gone. It was here a few years ago. Now obviously been all taken away. The abutments used to be yeah. Quite an unusual bridge as well because it's made of concrete. Might just be a little bit in here maybe. But there used to be quite a bit of it left behind. So I've obviously robbed it of concrete materials. Oh, there's a another stanchion tensioner in there. Another southern railway post sticking up there by looks of it. Uh, so the other abutment would have been about there where this pile is. And now we're sort of loosely back on the railway line. So we're heading towards Swainston and watching well, which is the private halt and residence of Simeon, the MP for Southampton. So we're now roughly back on the course of the railway line, finally. You see there's a Southern Railway fence post just in there. Another one bent over there. So we're on the right track now, finding it long last. Nice bit of ballast underfoot as well, because the other way is shingle ballast rather than granite ballast. This would have been the first of the occupation crossings, which obviously the old fence post have now gone. It's quite sad actually, because going back 10 years ago, Quite a lot of the stuff still sort of survived, you can see. So sadly, it's all going bit by bit along with the bridge and everything else.
don't know. This is uh, the road to Swainston Manor. This was the private station watching well, which was built for Simeon, who was the MP for Southampton. So you just see, there's the station building. Even got fire buckets lit still on the wall. The ticket office sign. Used to have a ground frame there as well for a small siding. It went round the back. You can see the platform edge running just along here. Still in fine fettle. platform running along here still and here's the end which comes down there not bad it's been extended a little bit but it was a tiny station so they're heading towards and there's another foot crossing down here and there's another bridge which is on the way to Shell Fleet now. Another crossing, occupation crossing, end of Swainston. See a little post, rail post, just go up there, look. Bit of bullet rail. On oh, white bullet rail. We'll do another one over here. Number two. <laughs> Nothing else lurking in the bushes by the looks of it. Oh, yes, there is. Yeah, there's the other post over here, look. Still standing strong. further on towards Shell Fleet. The crossing just on the way here, you can just see the end of the post. Now there used to be a proper freshwater yard for Newport Railway foot crossing down here somewhere and it's around here and I'm hoping it's not here because it was quite well preserved in it. It had all of the gates and stanchions. Ah, this is it. So it's lost that side. But it is here. So you've got the gate post and there's the actual gate in there. You can see that. I'm going to go around the other side and see if you can see it from the other side better. It's a shame the other side's been lost. It's a bit of history, railway history really, because the Freshwater Yard from Newport Railway gates were different to the Isle of Railway and Isle of Central. So if you look there, you've got a post coming down here. And it's still even got the latch mechanism still on it, look. And it still works. Look at that. That ought to be saved, really. So, looking at that gate there, it had a matching one on the other side, which is now gone. So, I would imagine that this post here is the upright, because you can see the hole for the latch in the middle there. So the gate would have been here, and it's vanished. Such a shame. Off we go on the tour the show. Missed on the way down at Watchmill Station is this lovely original Freshwater Yarmouth Newport Railway gate again. With the same latch mechanism as the crossing gate. That's pretty amazing. It's donkey's years old. It's still there. Just heading back towards. Um, Burnt House Lane. And you can see the line a bit better going this way. You can see it following over there. Although it's ploughed, you can still kind of see the line it took. Just approaching the uh, road bridge that goes just before Shelfleet. And uh, there's a little calvert here. Nicely built out of local stone. Again, quite unusual. Just see the remains of the railway brick cow right here which is just gradually going over by the looks of it oh can you hear that crunchy ballast look, look. sound like a railway lengthman it's a nice little stream 
So we're now approaching the road bridge up ahead. So the road deviates, or the, the walk deviates. So if you look just about coming into view now, is the uh, arch of the bridge. It still is carrying road traffic to this day. This is sort of right in the foreground of Swainston Manor. So, you see there? A stanchion just by the side of the railway bridge. A load of stuff's been dumped down here. It's had an underpinning as well by the looks of it. Typical railway bridge. And what I love about the architecture on bridges that are slightly angled is the way that the bricks sort of jut out to get that slight angle along the edge. Still an isolator bracket up as well. I smell foxes. So just up here, the remains of the isolator just up on the wall, which would have carried telegraph poles. Lots of old vehicle rubbish here by the looks of it. <laughs> you know what that's off of? It's an old lorry of some description. So there's a badger set living under here. So we're going to have a little sneak through here. Because just the other side, there's something quite special. Just in front of Swainston Manor now. The trap bed is just sort of in there, the flat bit. You know, when I come down here probably 10 years ago, the uh, ash ballast from this bit onwards, so you had shingle ballast from Newport to Swainston, and from here to sort of Shell Fleet, there was a lot of ash ballast, railway ash, locomotive ash ballast. Um, you could actually see the holes in the ground where the sleepers had come out still, as if it had just been lifted in the 1950s. So I'm going to skirt around the field and see if we can get back on there and see if we can find evidence of that. We walked under? Yes, the railway bridge. Is that where I... Oh, you filming? That's the uh, stanchion. And just going over the top, so that way went to Swinston. Uh, sorry, Shellfleet. This way is going back to Newport. It's in quite good fell. All the stanchions for the tension is for the fences are in really good nick. Really good nick. Railway line comes down over here. Follows this line of hedge all the way along here. That's right, looking back towards Swainston. And this is now stood on the foot track page, a small bit of track that we can walk on the old railway line. It's not much of this bit, but it's flat you can tell it's the old railway line. Clearing down there, so it's so it's been reasonably maintained. We are just walking down. Oh yeah, I can smell fox dung now. <laughs> so the line's actually quite good shape, although the evidence here was round about here of the uh, sleepers still in the ground. Um, so it's changed a bit, and there's a lake here on the left, which I don't remember that being there ever. And that's all different non-floating dustbin it's kind of been turned into like a nature reserve it's like the water just come down the hill and settled here so not bad it's good yeah thanks for that <laughs> <laughs> so it's not bad not bad shape oh that this was a this is a recent development because the Southern Railway fence post is now down in there in the water, <laughs> semi submerged. But it's quite a nice little wild life reserve they've sort of created here. Quite nice. But yeah, it wasn't like this. It is nice that they've sort of boarded this off now. It looks quite nice. It's a shame other people can't walk down it, even though we are. 
Right, and I mentioned that when I used to come down before about the ash ballast and the fact you could see where the sleepers used to be. This is probably the last bit you can see there's a hump here where there was a, a gap where the sleeper used to be. And you can see the ash loco ballast. It's partly burnt coal there. Look. And uh, the extremities of the loco ash. All the way over here, look, there's a, another part bit there. And even a bit of loco clinker. Look at that. Nice lump of loco clinker that was probably burnt many years ago. And a bit of loco coal as well, look. Nice bit of Welsh deep nav. So it just goes to show you, it's uh, all still here because this bit's sort of been largely off of access to the public. It's um, survived quite nicely, which is kind of nice. But the kind of the uh, jewel in the crown is at the end here because there's quite a steep drop. And there's a nice picture of the railway line when the train was running through. You can't quite see the route of the railway line, but more of the local ash ballast. It's hardly, I believe, what the railway run there, but when I show you a photo later on, you can see, oh, there's another bit of loco clinker there. Look. Some of the white stuff you used to get. Obviously, that was one of the byproducts of steam engines, this loco ash. So one of the things I used to do was use it as a base for putting down railway trap bits. This is quite nicely preserved through here, really. It's quite a kind of off to the public. There's a Colin Pomeroy's point, he says the freshwater line is largely unfindable. It is, if you're prepared to do a bit of walking, going down a few footpaths and off the beaten track, you will find it. Nice little railway bridge here, still surviving. It's got this nice handle, <laughs> handrails. And on both sides. It's quite nice that. It's getting a bit humpy and lumpy again now. Watch your foot. Right, so from memory when we get to the end of this tree line it suddenly drops into a field where you wouldn't believe a railway line ran because the incline was so sharp and there was a double S bend as well which I think the only way you can pick it out is by there's a small bridge at the bottom which there were railings left in the field but they're probably gone now but we'll see if we can find that drive to the other side and find the other side there's probably an occupation crossing here by the looks of it it's opened up here a little bit. Tractor winding away. This is a road that comes up through here. Not further up anyway. No. Talk now about the stock road. <laughs> further down. This bit's been not walked for a long time. In fact as you crunching down you can feel the ash ballast underneath. Possibly with the gaps of the sleepers that I remember. Because there's little ridges. You can't see it because of the carpet of ivy. Banners breaking through there. Look. It's getting quite thicky up here. Whoop. Boggy in this bit. One thing I have noticed though along the way is there's no evidence of nine side structures like P way huts or things like that, which makes you wonder if they were like a wooden 
construction type thing. I think actually because it's quite boggy we've got the side bit I think. Quite boggy in that bit there. The line runs down through in here, just a bit boggy underfoot. Scout around the boggy bits. And back onto the track bed again. Oh yeah, oops. Ah yeah, we're getting to the edge of the bit where it suddenly ends. You see it, uh, Formations going up ahead. Again, largely undisturbed down through here. You see, here's evidence of landowners pushing trees down to stop people walking down the middle. Stop access. Pretty naughty. Evidence of uh, nature overcoming man. Here's the fence post here. The, the thing, isn't it? It's going through the tree. <laughs> so here's the power line. Going through here. And you just see this grass lump. Here's triangle. It's the remains of the track. Bed. So we're back on the track bed again now. This is the bit I was trying to point out. It's kind of unusual because what the railway does is it goes sharply downhill. You wouldn't believe there was a railway line here. You think there's no possible way a train would have run through here. But what it did was it sort of snaked snakes around there and then back around again, following where Jane is there, skirts back around and then back over and there is actually a bridge in the bottom. And over in the distance is where the crossing or station building was. I think it was a crossing keeper's cottage, but I think they pulled that down, but we'll go and have a look. So this is the line looking back towards Newport. Impossible to think that was a railway line, isn't it? Describe the rather tortuous route that this line took as it come down out of the field. So it came from over that line of hedges, which is where the railway line is. And so it did a double S snake, and this here is the remains of the railway bridge. So there is a bit of a hump where the, you can just see the last remains of the formation of the line going across. It's very sort of S shaped. So here is the railway bridge, which did have its railings until a few years ago. Obviously it's been rubbed. Oh yeah, they just see one of them sticking out there. Yeah, well done, Jay. Yeah, there's the railing just sticking out there. So this ran rather oddly across here. So this would have been straight like that. Obviously it curved up through the field. There's the end of the other stanchion poking out over there. Bang, bang goes the farmer with his gun. Yeah. yeah, that's the remains of the bridge. Can't quite see it, but there's a bit of an angle up through there. Yeah, you just see the stanchion up through there. Here's the side of the bridge coming down there. So, the railway line came down from that clump of trees there. 
down a shape to that bridge just there and here into nowhere it's vanished so from the road here's the railway line just sort of see the lump hump in the track where it would have gone which has been ploughed out and there's the bridge and the lump just see another hump in the field there it goes across slight hump and through into there we go through to lane crossing so sadly this house was pulled down this was a crossing keeper's house it stood for many years another travesty like Godsill station and where this hole is now is where the crossing keeper's house used to stand interesting it's now full up with water but what's interesting is in the undergrowth is another freshwater yard of a Newport railway crossing gate with the green paint from the Southern Railway still on it. Quite a thicket in here, so this is the Newport side over here. And it would have crossed over into here. So we've still got the remains of the railway gate posts for the crossing on here. Again, a bit of Southern Railway green paint on it still. And the other one here. And this is the remains of the cottage fencing that used to be here. So the railway line goes down through there. What is quite funny is when you look in the water, you can see the original footings still survive. The old cottage. So I don't know if anyone's going to build on there again. Shame it was pulled down. Real shame.